When it comes to style, I love neutrals more than anything, and I have done for years. Beiges and monochromes have been my firm color choices for years, and I continue to be drawn to this way of dressing, as I can never really seem to get tired of these kinds of colors. So in terms of longevity and keeping up with a minimalist wardrobe, this color palette is definitely a safe choice. But as I've been evolving my style a little bit over the past few years, compared to when I first got into capsule wardrobe dressing, I can't help but long for a splash of color here and there to reinvigorate my wardrobe and my personal style, especially with spring right around the corner. So can you even have a colorful minimalist wardrobe? Of course you can, and that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Sine. I am a certified style coach and professional color consultant from Denmark. I'm also a slow fashion content creator and activist under the name Use Less. What does minimalist mean anyway? Now, before getting into the minimalist's guide to wearing more color, let's just have a look at what minimalism even means. According to becomingminimalist.com, minimalism is all about intentionality. At its core, being a minimalist means intentionally promoting the things we most value and removing anything that distracts us from it. It's a life that forces intentionality upon us. As a result, it forces improvements in almost all aspects of your life. Intentionality looks different for everybody and not two individuals are the same, but it requires each of us to dive deeper and become more introspective about our values and passions. This confirms the theory that yes, of course you can wear color and even colorful prints as a minimalist, if that's something you love doing, that is. So minimalism might have the stereotypical clean, white, gray, beige aesthetic when you look it up on social media or Pinterest and as much as I do feel drawn to this specific look myself, remember it's not just about adopting the aesthetics. Minimalism is a way of life. So if you can keep a wardrobe full of faves that make you excited, that you want to wear and rewear over and over again, this can indeed be a more colorful one. However, I do also want to point out that when something is being described as minimalistic, it describes anything that has been stripped down or simply Simplified to its essential components. So of course you could argue that minimalist fashion is also about dressing in a particularly simple way. So I definitely think you should find your own compromise here. Know your dominant coloring type. Color analysis is amazing because it helps you learn to look from within rather being tempted by trendlet color palettes that you might get tired of quicker or that will leave you feeling totally overwhelmed by choices. It keeps you, your style, your your unique coloring and preferences at the center, and that's the key to making well-considered fashion choices. Of course, this is going to be the first thing I mentioned for today's video. Color analysis reached a height in popularity back in the 80s, and it's used as a way to make more well-considered choices for clothing and makeup, as you ensure that whatever color you buy will harmonize with your natural coloring. So this means your hair, eye, and skin color combined. It's not the only approach to wearing color at all, some people love color analysis, other people tend to simply follow their gut. So as with anything else evolving around personal style, choose whichever technique that suits your temper. I love the tonal system which we use at Color Me Beautiful because it's a super flexible way of working with color types because mostly we're looking at your dominant features and of course your personality too and then building the entire palette around that. So I've tried following quite a few different techniques out there through the years and nothing quite ever made the light bulb go on for me like this technique, especially since it focuses more on how to actually wear your colors, meaning you don't need an entirely new wardrobe to wear your best colors at all. This makes the analysis really helpful regardless of whether you are first starting to dip your toes into wearing more color or if you have a wardrobe full of colors that now feels a little bit incoherent and hard to style. Either way, the approach will make your color choices feel a lot more more streamlined, which I think is key for a minimalist wardrobe. If you want to know more, I'm going to link a video all about the dominant color types that I work with, which I made last year right here. Or you can of course check out my color analysis services on my website, which will be linked down below of this video to get a professional 
color analysis yourself. You can also watch a virtual consultation that I did on my good friend and YouTube colleague Christina Michas and you'll definitely be able to see what an impact wearing and combining your best colors can have on your appearance in that video and that will also be linked down below. How to add color to your wardrobe in a mindful way. Now this is something I've talked about before in a previous video but I thought it was apt to sum it all up here as well since we're talking all things colors today. So being mindful about what you invite into your life and what clothes you add to your wardrobe in particular is key when committing to a minimalist wardrobe. In order to make sure you don't end up getting overwhelmed by choices or end up having a wardrobe that feels incoherent and all over the place, I definitely recommend you to start small if wearing color is completely new to you. So focus on your favorite four colors to start off with and then use those as a way to make your neutrals feel more fresh from season to season. For example, many people love wearing the brighter and lighter colors like pink, turquoise and yellow during spring and summer, whereas the deeper colors like burgundy, bottle green and mustard are perfect for both autumn and winter. Think in outfits. When it comes to shopping, I typically go secondhand first as a way to keep in line with a more eco-friendly approach to shopping and shopping for colors in particular. But I also know it's not always possible. So remember, do your best here and make sure that you buy with intention of wearing this new color for as long as possible. As with anything else in my wardrobe, regardless of color, neutral or accent, I try to give myself time to really think it through before buying. So that's really important. Sometimes I give myself months before I buy. I also try to think in outfits when I'm shopping to make sure that it will be easy for me to style that new colorful item with what I already have in my wardrobe. A white cotton shirt, for example, can easily get new life with one of the Dylan fabric dyes that you can use at home. Colorful basics. Another easy way to get started is by focusing on your basics. Basics look different for everyone and I usually like to define these as those items from your wardrobe job that you wear the absolute most and that you love wearing. Items that are comfortable and easy for you to style. Those will be your basics. So why not try a fresh color update next time you are out shopping for basics? A sweater, a blazer, or even a t-shirt in one of your best colors can really make a world of a difference and you'd be adding an item to your wardrobe that you already know that you love wearing. You already know how to style it. It's just the color that makes it different. How to wear your colors. With the tonal system that I mentioned earlier, which is the name of the color analysis technique I've been trained to use, we focus a lot on how to wear your colors, which will vary from color type to color type too. So we don't only focus on the single shade of colors. For example, if you are a clear, then combinations with high contrast tend to work better. Whereas if you're a soft color type like me, the more tonal and blended color combinations with less contrast feel more harmonious. So knowing your dominant color type is definitely one helpful way to learn how to wear your best colors. But here are some other ideas as well. Go for solids. Now I know I said earlier that minimalist style isn't just about the aesthetics and that of course you can wear prints as a minimalist and I stand by this opinion. But hear me out on this one. If you do happen to feel drawn to the minimalist wardrobe aesthetic which is clean and simple cuts and styles which I totally do on some level too then there's definitely a way to work around that even with a more colorful wardrobe. An easy way to approach it is to stick to solid colored items rather than super colorful and bold prints. Stick with the simple styles and outfit formulas like you would normally go for, but then go for a fresh color update. I do also think that two color prints like stripes, especially paired with other solid colored items, give that splash of color, but still in a minimalistic way. Bold prints with many different colors would make the look a little bit more maximalist. Three color rule is an easy way to ensure color harmony in your outfits and it can also be quite helpful in terms of keeping a slightly more calm and simple aesthetic within your outfits. So simply stick to a total of three colors in your outfits and that will in itself ensure a more simple and clean look whether you're going for a super colorful or neutral look. If you're ready to learn more don't forget to check out my website which I will link down below for all of my styling and color services. I also have a capsule wardrobe masterclass that will teach you to dress for your authentic
authentic self all the way through defining your personal style, finding your best colors, how to wear them, and also dressing in harmony with your unique body shape. With that, thank you all. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope this proved that of course you can have a minimalist wardrobe with colors. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe before you leave as well. I would love to have you around. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it and I will see you hopefully very soon for another video. Bye guys. Thank you.